valve is not seeding properly. So we've got a problem with the freshwater system having a small leak. So here's the freshwater accumulator tank that just came out of the boat. It's the lifestyle of the rich and famous. These are the most dangerous thunderstorms. 51. 51. Yeah. So the wind basically got up underneath the sail, started lifting it up the track. I have to tell you, it breaks my heart. I'm Adriana, and this is Jim. We met in a band, got married, had a family, got into boating, and when our children moved to London, we sold everything to move on to Kikamalu, our home, a 42-foot Swanson with our Spoodle Lucy. This is our salty life. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Last time we put an additional 12 volt power supply for the fridge in the forepeak. We met Jen and Yuja's brand new baby hunter. We visited Winder Whopper and almost had an anchoring disaster. The next morning, the day dawned calm and beautiful and the people who had caused so much fuss the night before slipped away at first light. However, it was a talk of the bay. Apparently they had tried to anchor in that wind several times but each time kept dragging. The last time they almost dragged onto us until we shone the light on them and they took the hint and moved further away. Luckily we had no problems after that, but it was a tense night and we didn't sleep very well. It was during the stingy ride that we realised there must be a leak somewhere in the high pressure floor. It was time for Jim to do some detective work. It's either going to be leaking from a seam or the valve. Most likely cause is probably contamination in the valve, so I'm going to give, give that a clean by releasing a bit of air to blow over the ceiling surfaces. Now I'm going to just give the ceiling surface a clean with a moistened cotton bud. We've had a bit of sand in the boat from the beaches recently and hopefully this will fix it. I'll give that a go now and see if it holds the pressure. Now a final detergent test to see if there's any bubbles forming. And oh yeah, I can see we have a problem here. You can see the detergent and water solution is bubbling in this area. So there's a problem here on either this reinforcing pad or that pad. It's from this pad. So it's leaking around this area here out of this reinforcing pad. That's going to require a total removal and repair or maybe a replacement because that's a high pressure floor and the dinghy won't sink, but it's no good without a firm floor. So we had to get back to the marina to sort out the dinghy, but not only that, a storm was on its way and it was going to be a good one. These areas could see supercell thunderstorms develop. These are the most dangerous thunderstorms that can produce destructive winds, giant hail, and very heavy rainfall leading to dangerous flash flooding. This must have been a time for leaks because Jim found a leak in one of the freshwater supply connections which needed to be sorted. So we had three reasons to be back on the marina. If you're beginning to get the impression that there is always something going wrong on a boat, then you'd be right. So uh, this is the fresh water system. We've got two lines that come up from the two tanks. They go up to this pump, which then f the outlet flows into the accumulator tank, then back in through this uh, one micron filter, and then uh, gets distributed to the boat. So we've got a problem with the freshwater system having a small leak coming out 
where this nipple has been screwed into this filter housing. So I can see that it's just coming out down here. And when I put a bit of pressure on the filter, I can actually see that the filter housing is moving relative to this nipple here, which is screwed and probably glued into this side. So I need to dismantle this whole thing, put some uh, plumbing tape on that nipple, re-screw it back in, and then reassemble this whole assembly into the accumulator tank. Unfortunately, what I'd love to do would be just to get a spanner onto this and just tighten it up, but I can't because it's connected to this thing. So it's a matter of taking it apart just to fix that problem. freshwater accumulator tank that just came out of the boat and uh, here's the bladder that came out of it so <laughs> that's about probably 20 years old that bladder it's completely and utterly stuffed and I'm hoping that I can find a replacement bladder rather than have to refit a different style of water tank so one small leak has become a much larger problem <laughs> And explains a lot of things. Yeah. While Jim was working hard, I took a look at the newest boat on the block. Meet Mischief, a luxury cruiser which has just arrived from the Whitsundays. It's 170 foot long and weighs 700 tonnes. That's about 60 times the weight of our boat. It belongs to one of Australia's richest men. He just sold Dala Dump, a company that rents garbage skips. He's been described as an alchemist who managed to change garbage into gold. He now charters boats worldwide and mischief is one. This little boat charters for about 15,000 an hour, or you can have her for as little as half a million for a week. This is his mate's boat, a $1.5 million Grady White, sporting four Yamaha outboards which put out 1,700 horsepower of fish catching grunt to get them out to sea and home in time for the next meeting. So now I'm going to try and just connect the water pump directly to the filter so that we have water until I can sort out the accumulator tank. It's not ideal and um, I'm going to have to back off the pressure on the pump so that it doesn't go berserk all the time. Right. And we're probably going to have to turn the pump on when we need it and off when we don't. Or we can use the hand pump at the sink. Okay. So I just, I'm just not sure how long it's going to take me to get an accumulator tank. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, if I can get the same type of tank to replace it, it would be great. So we'll see how we go. So a small leak has turned into a major operation. As per usual. <laughs> I have connected the outlet of the pump directly to the inlet of the filter now, bypass the whole accumulator. Otherwise we won't have any water until we can sort the issue out. So I'm just going to uh, reattach the filter. And um, I'm also going to actually uh, back off the pressure on the freshwater pump. Otherwise, it's going to be constantly trying to run over pressurizing the system potentially with no accumulator. And it doesn't do the pump any good either. There's a screw here which determines the pressure. And you're not supposed to change it, but I'm backing it off to begin with 
and then I'll see whether I need to actually wind it back a bit. Okay, I'm not going to close this back up until I've I've got it running and I'm happy with the pressure. Okay, honey, can you turn the water pressure on and open the faucet on cold? Okay, just um, don't entirely close the faucet, but just close it so that it's a reduced flow. Yeah, that's great. A bit more, please, honey. Open. Yeah. Just want to try and get the air out of the system. Okay, now open it fully. Okay, close it. Okay, I'm just going to adjust it down a little bit. Okay, just try that again. Okay, so we're back in business until we can get an accumulator tank sorted out. The storm had arrived and the wind was howling. 51. 51? And later that night, we woke up to the sound of sails flapping. This is an ominous sound for a sailor in a marina, as it can signal that a sail is unfurling. An unfurling sail can flog itself to pieces and destroy anything in its path. It can even demaster a boat, damaging other boats with it. The people on board, a lovely family, were fast asleep and completely oblivious to the danger until Jim woke them. By the time I got out of bed and found the camera, Jim had already got the sail under control and the guy was up on deck with him. The westerly came through and uh, the family next door had their um, mainsail bag open and the stern of the boat was facing the wind. So the wind basically got up underneath the sail, started, the sail. started lifting it yeah. up the track. <laughs> so we had to just get the bloody luff down and, and you know, hang on to it till we could tie it down and then sort it out. out that catamaran that was beached last night. It was a sobering sight. they've got a problem with water ingress through the sail drive, you know, if there's damage in that area, which uh, is preventing them from wanting to try and tow it back out or winch it back out, it's hard to understand why it's just been left like that. I have to tell you, it breaks my heart. Later we discovered that the catamaran belongs to a couple in their 70s from Sydney. They were supposed to have their boat slipped in Port Stephens but couldn't because of the gale force winds. So they took a public mooring and it broke. Luckily, they were helped by a couple of locals and they're fine. So it was time to head for Sydney again to either fix the dinghy or get a new one. We also need to pick up a new accumulator tank for our water system. It's a no day, things are gonna change. It's a no day, things are gonna change. It's a 
Join us next week as we explore different options for dinghies, speak to experts and go for an epic sail on Sydney Harbour. Thank you so much for watching. You're legends. You know what to do if you want to support us. And if you feel so inclined, you can visit our Patreon page. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and keep that tail wagging. Ah!